Jesse. Yo, 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 y
not Saturday. My apologies. She wasn't missing on Saturday. But when she saw the toddler, uh, she pulled over. When she pulled over, uh, she called her sister. She called 911. And then she also called a family member as well and saying that, hey, I see this toddler on the side of the road. You know, I'm going to see what's going on. While she was on the phone, her family member said that they heard her scream uh, and then lost contact with her. And so that is when they believe that she was abducted at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously a, a national uh manhunt went uh, on for her for about two days uh, it was all over social media uh, the media was also covering as well there were calls for the media to you know do more to to find her and then uh, she returned home on foot so right now um, it's just you know a lot of uh, details that we still do not know is still developing st things are changing like for example I just saw the update 32 minutes ago uh, with the footage so this is one of those things where you know we just have to wait until uh, more stuff comes out now they did say when the officers arrived at the scene they saw her wig, phone, and purse uh, on on the ground, but there was no sign of the child uh, anywhere uh, at all. So, well, I'm glad that young lady is home. Mm -hmm. And if it indeed was an abduction, uh, you know, in connection with human trafficking, I pray to God that we can bring down every single human trafficking organization on this planet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And just and just for clarity, because I want to make sure I give that correction. Um, it was Thursday, you know, when she went missing. Thursday night, and then right? Saturday. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. And Saturday when she was found. All right. All right. Well, that is front page news. Now, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you're uh, upset, you need to vent or you had a great weekend, whatever it may be. Phone lines are open for you. 800-585-1051. Get it off your chest. Call us now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800 585 1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? This is Zach out of Houston. Zach out of Houston, man. Zach, what up, man? Get it off your chest, bro. What's up, man? Hey, Charlemagne, good morning. Hey, Jay, good morning. Good morning. Hey, yo, so uh, I got a big and all y'all got some kids around my same uh, age. What they eating? Because my son eats juice, crackers, and strawberries. That's not it. That's your fault. Yeah, that, that's your. Um, I'll hey, be honest. I'm trying, man. I got the green beans. He won't eat them. Nope. I keep telling y'all, when a kid get hungry, a kid gonna eat anything. Y'all, what happens is these kids start bucking back when they don't want something, and we bow down to them and give them what they want. Yeah, they, you, you shouldn't give your fun, you shouldn't give your child that, that many snacks. And I tell all, all the parents out there. Uh, for my last daughter, my last daughter never really ate baby food. She ate like real food. We did that. We did that. We did the whole try to mash things up, you know, do all that. He did it. He did good at first, but now. But like Charlamagne said, the baby got to be eating something. Y'all even giving that baby snacks. Y'all giving that baby crackers. Y'all giving that baby. Oh, well, now eventually, eventually he'll eat. I guess he put the you got to starve him out. Got to starve him out, yeah. man. <laughs> but but try to find things that try to find things that the baby will eat. Like my daughter loves, uh, and and she's not even two years old. But my daughter loves like the the little the chicken fingers that you could um bake in the oven. My no daughter, man, y'all want the chicken yeah. fingers? These kids to death. My daughter loves that. that my daughter chicken, loves chicken fingers. Ain't no better than the stuff y'all talking about. You can't chicken fingers but, okay. to death. But that's better than crackers and strawberries. I don't know if it is actually. Yes, it is, man. Processed chicken fingers over fresh strawberries. Well, well, it's not processed. Not processed. What is it then, Envy? It's chicken breast. White chicken breast, not processed. You said chicken fingers. Well, no, nah, they the chicken breast that they made oh, that's in the different. fingers. Yeah, chicken yeah. breast is different. No, nah, it's not. It's not chicken fingers from you know from a fast food place. But I would try that. Also, um, so my child likes things like rice. Macaroni and cheese, yeah. and then I throw in cheese. I throw the broccoli. Macaroni. I think it's the noodle. My my, my child love broccoli. Hey, y'all sound crazy. Y'all like my kids like food. That's all y'all saying. Nah, because <laughs> you not. Name it food. Because if you got a picky kid, like you know, I got I had a picky kids that like you said, well, only eat strawberries. There's something about strawberries that the kids like. Strawberries, bananas, but that's good. I, but but make them eat more fruit. But they need a little more substance. They need a little more meat. Pause. Fruit is good. Strawberries <laughs> and bananas is good. <laughs> but they need some meat too. Some protein. Kids, it's the children need protein. Stuff that's killing our kids. Or killing us too. God. All right, well, I'm going to try some of that. Hey, but can I get a book, a hat? Yeah, I got you. Hold on, okay? If they actually send it to you this time, they have me lying to the people. Hold on, all right? I got Black Effect okay. hats here. I got all types of books. I got my own book, Shook One. I got Tavika Mallory, State of Emergency, Anita Kopak, Shallow Waters. But, you know, the producers got to send them out. Yeah, real love. Real life, real love is here, too. Yep. Hello, who's this? It's Blake. Blake, what up? Get it off your chest. What's up, man? Look here. What I don't know if y'all remember what y'all was doing in 1993. No. Hell. But on June 20, 
June 23rd, 1993, I met this woman. And uh, we were, uh, we fell in love, but I wanted to be a hot boy. I ran the hall. How old, were you? How, old were you? How old were you in 1993? I was 18. Okay. Okay. She was 16. So come on, get to the story. Now you're 40, now you're 48. What's up? So 30 years to the day that we met, as we went and lived our lives and, you know, matured on other people's hands, we got married. Okay. On the day that we met, 30 years later. That's amazing, well, brother. Congratulations, congratulations brother. King. Shout your queen out. I want to shout out my, my beautiful, beautiful wife, Sheila Gaines. And uh, I tried I tried to call her uh, the day of, but uh, I got shut down. But uh, that's another another thing. But uh, I just wanted to get that out there. When you, you say know, hold on, when, you, when, real, you, know? when you say you got sat down, you went to jail? No, no, he said he got shut out. He couldn't no, 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 get no, through no. the phone. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. No, no, I didn't go to jail. I just I wasn't mature enough to handle the, the oh, woman. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Got you. Okay. Got you. Well, I wanted you, to be a drug deal. I wanted to, I wanted to be a pimp, a player. Well, I'm glad you grew up. Yeah. I was 15 in 1993. I don't remember anything from 1993. I'm sitting there trying to think, like, 1993 specifically? No. 15? I can't recall much. No. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vet, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake up. Wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, hey, it's Leo. What's going on, man? Peace, peace. Leo, what up? Get it off your chest. Man, I want to get off my chest about Charlemagne, man. Hey, Charlemagne, it's almost been 30 years since you seen Jordan pick up a ball. Stop bringing up Jordan when you, when you talk about LeBron. Please, man. It's almost been 30 years. What does that mean? So, 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 because a person was uh ha was was prospering 30 years ago, we supposed to just stop talking about his accomplishments 30 years later? Nobody bring up Joe Budden or no? When we talk about Charlamagne, when we give you your flowers. I don't understand the logic. All, I don't understand the logic. All the comparison you just made. Charlamagne don't rap. <laughs> but I don't. I don't understand that logic. All comparison. But there's always going to be a Michael Jordan conversation in regards to LeBron. Whenever somebody says LeBron is the greatest basketball player of all time, because the greatest basketball player of all time is Michael Jordan. So there's always going to be a debate. Now, for people that just joined us uh, earlier today, we reported that uh, LeBron is. Uh, Changing his number back to 23 in honor of Bill and Russell. And guess whose number was 23? Michael Jordan. Exactly. And Charlemagne and myself said we feel that the 23 should number be should retired. just be retired in the league. That, yes. That's it. It was no comparison. It the, was nothing else. Ask, my, ask LeBron James why he wears the number 23. And then ask me, are we ever going to be able to separate Michael Jordan from any discussion of LeBron being the GOAT? Hello, who's this? Good morning. Good morning. Get it off your chest. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a shout out. Y'all are like low key my inspiration in the morning. I just wanted to give you guys your flowers this morning. That's all. Well, thank you, Queen. Well, thank What's you your so name? much, Molly. Hey, Molly. I'm glad <laughs> well, we can wake okay, you up in the morning. morning. I'm glad you enjoy waking yes, up with definitely. the Breakfast Club in the morning. Let me ask you a question. How long have you been listening to the Breakfast Club? I've been listening to y'all for like the last four or five years. Okay, so who you think sh who do you think should be the new co-host? Ooh, I'm sorry. I gotta go with my girl. That's hilarious. Um. Love her. <laughs> okay. And how okay. old are you, Mama? Okay. I'm 33. Okay. 33. Okay. She well, said that's hilarious. Okay. All right. Why are you asking that? Well, I mean, I just feel like it's about time for us to start making those decisions. Okay. You know. All right. It's summertime. We going into the fall. You know. I know we said we was gonna wait till the rest of the year, but you know, I just feel like you might need to start thinking about these type of things. Okay. We've been thinking about it though. Watch the throne. Okay. Watch the throne. There's another throne to be added, right? That's right. Right. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. When we come back, uh, we got your room report. We got to talk Dr. Dre. He'll tell you about two people he refused to work with. We'll get to it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Dr. Dre. Rumor has it, rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I am gossiping. This is the Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes, right. on The Breakfast Club. Now, Dr. Dre sat down with Kevin Hart on his uh, show Heart to Heart series I watched that this weekend. Mm -hmm. I did. I watched that in full this weekend. All right. Now, they talked about a lot of things, but one of the things that was very interesting was the fact that he turned down working with his heroes, Prince and Michael Jackson. Who did you have the opportunity to work with? He was like, nah, I didn't, that you regret and that you should have worked with. Prince, 
Michael Jackson. Uh, you bowed out from yeah. working with them? Yeah. Both of them? Yeah. You didn't work with both Prince and Michael Jackson? Yeah. Was it like a demo tape or something? Nah, week? they just asked me to work with them, and I just, like, what the f am I going to do with them? What? Yeah, that happened. What? Yeah. Was there like... What the f am I going to do in the studio with them? Those are my fucking heroes, man, you know? You're Dr. Dre. Stop. I respected his answer in this totality, though. He said, you know, he basically said, what would I do in the studio with either one of them? Because he said he's better at working with new people. He said he wouldn't be able to coach them, is what he, he, he yeah. didn't use the word coach, but that's what he was saying. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think it's, you know, Michael Jackson was great. Prince is great. Dre mm -hmm. was great. So the fact that you get all that greatness in the studio coming together, I mean, you could just imagine some of the ideas or things that they would have came up with. I respect it, though. Cause, I mean, how many people would just jump to work at the chance with uh, Michael Jackson and Prince? But Dr. Dre's like, look, if I if I don't feel like I'm going to bring my A game, if I don't feel like I'm going to do something new with either one of these icons, then I'd rather not do it. But they said no show is better than a bad show. Because what if that record wasn't good? We'd That's be true. killing Because we'd be expecting so much, right? Right. A Michael Jackson, Dr. Dre record, a Prince, Dr. Dre record. We'd be expecting so much. If it's subpar, we're going to kill him. Yeah, but I don't think Dre would make a subpar. I mean, Dre's the same guy that's, you know, produced for Snoop and Pac and Mary J. Blige and 50 and Eminem. Well, and he, he felt like he could do something with them. He felt like he couldn't do, no, he couldn't do nothing with Prince and Michael. I, I respect the fact that he, uh, I guess he knew his, his limitations. Mm -hmm. He said Stevie Wonder, too. That was another person he named. Wow. Yeah. Now, Jay-Z, salute to Jay-Z. Drop a bomb for Jay-Z. His Sean Carter Foundation raised $20 million at the Black Tie New York City Gala the other night. Uh, some of the people in the building, of course, was Beyonce, uh, Uzi, uh, New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft, uh, NFL commissioner, uh, Mike Rubin. Uh, I heard Thomas a couple of rappers paid a million dollars for a Michael Rubin hug from the back, too. I'm not going to. Really? I don't want to say no names, but I heard a couple of rappers there paid a million dollars for a Michael Rubin hug from the back. Is there any truth to that? Well, maybe because he reached $20 million. Uh, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos uh, contributed a $10 million legacy donation. They said Twitter founder Jack Dorsey donated $2 million. So uh, salute to Hove and, and getting all that money. Now that money uh, benefits uh, individuals dealing with socioeconomic hardships pursue their education at institutions. So again, congratulations to Hove. All right. All right. Lastly, we got to talk Boosie Badass. All right. Now Boosie Badass's uh, daughter, I don't, not Boosie, Boosie Badass, Boosie's daughter claims that uh, Boosie took back her car because she wanted to care for her mom. Now, Boosie's daughter uh, went on Instagram alleging that the rapper took back the car he had gifted her and that she was so upset just because she wanted to uh, move in with her mom and help her mom. Well, Boosie, of course, replied, I take a car for leaving her. I take a car for her leaving Atlanta. LOL. Big lie. She left Atlanta out of nowhere because she knew her mom's had filed child support papers on me. This is after I brought you an $80,000 car. I've always taken care of my children. She wasn't saying this two weeks ago when she was in Atlanta going on shopping sprees every day and uh, as never said this, but now I'm not a dad spoiled. If you go, if you're going to go down, talk, if you're going to talk down on your father, mind you, Boosie wrote this, this wise little all the crits, please. If you're going to talk down on your father, talk the truth about your mother who's been arrested over 12 times for stealing and yada, 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 yada. So they've been going back and forth online. It's a long ass post. And this is why I say when parents and kids get into a, a situation or there's an argument or anything with family, I always say keep it off the gram. There's no reason why all this should be on the gram. Yeah, I don't care. It's not my business. You know, even if they post on social media, it's still not not my business. And, you know, nothing I hate seeing more than this, like kids spazzing on parents on social media. And when parents spaz on their kids on social media, I don't like any of it. Like there's no other way to have conversations with, e with, e with each other than social media. There's no other way to express your grievances or your issues nowadays other than getting online and airing out your, your child or your child airing out parents. I don't like it. Like, what do you hope to accomplish by doing that? Yeah, there's audio. We don't need to play the audio, but, you know, this is just a deeper problem when I say when you have when you have children and, and, and children, if you're listening, if there is an issue, if there is a problem, if there is any altercation or anything, you should directly, directly go to your mother or your father. The reason being is you don't want to do something that. As Charlamagne will always say, you don't want to do something for a, a, a motion and then think about it later and be like, damn, I effed up. Because a lot of the things that you do, you can't bring back. You yeah, can't they, take back. They're making permanent decisions based off temporary feelings. Like, yeah, you mad at your pops today, but you get online and air your pops out. That's still your pops. Correct. <laughs> for the rest of your life. Correct. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And vice versa. If you're a parent, you get online and air your child out. Now you put some and publicly embarrass your child, traumatize your child. That's still your child at the end of the day. Right. And we didn't see that with Russell Simmons and his daughter recently. We didn't see that with uh, Master P and his son. We didn't see that with Kirk Franklin and his son. And now this is just. I don't like just, it. Sometimes just, I just don't like to see family business in the public like that. And I don't know what you hope to accomplish by doing this. Mm -mm. That's my biggest thing. Like, what, what, did you, what do you hope to gain 
by doing any of this. All right. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. Now, when we come back, we got front page news. Tesla Figaro will be joining us. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Our audible pick of the day is Snoop Dogg's From the Streets to the Suites. Here's Snoop's journey from the streets of Long Beach to hip-hop legend. Listen when you sign up for a free trial at audible.com slash Snoop. Hey everybody, it's DJ NV Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Cousin Figaro is back. What up, kids? What up, DJ NV and Charlemagne the God? Peace, peace, Ted. Let's jump right into it. Let's talk about this Arizona Republican uh, referring to black Americans as colored people in the House floor debate. Yes, Arizona Republican Representative Eli Crane referred to black people as colored people Thursday in a floor debate over his proposed amendment to an annual defense policy bill. Now, it prompted a stern rebuke from the former chair of congressional of the Congressional Black Caucus, Representative Joyce Beatty from Ohio. Let's listen to the exchange and we will talk about it on the other side. Well, Mr. Chairman, though, that was unbelievably inspiring my amendment has nothing to do with whether or not colored people or black people or anybody can serve, okay? It has nothing to do with color Mr. Your Speaker. skin, any of that stuff. What we want to preserve and maintain is the fact that our military does not become a social experiment. We want the best of the best. We want to have standards that guide who, who's in what unit, what they do. And I'm going to tell you guys right, right now, the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians, the North Koreans, they are, not, they are not doing this because they want the strongest military possible. I'd like to be recognized to have the words colored people stricken uh, from the record. I find it offensive oh, God. and very inappropriate. Is the gentlelady asking for unanimous consent to take down the words? I am asking for unanimous consent to take down the words of referring to me or any of my colleagues as colored people. So colored people is offensive now? Um, yes, I, I think so. I mean, it, it, Let me nobody, ask you a nobody refers uh, uh, to anybody black as colored. That's not true. The NAACP is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. We say people of color all the time. I don't think I don't think anybody referred to me as a colored person. The NAACP is called the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Right. But we had to put some context with this, though. You know, we're talking about a bill that was literally uh, about removing uh, race. Uh, let me just kind of explain what the defense bill amendment is about so people can understand why it was so offensive. Mm -hmm. So the f defense bill uh, amendment that they were adding and dis uh, arguing with at that particular time was about uh, prohibiting uh, the race, gender, religion, political affiliation for recruitment, training, education, promotion or retention decisions. So basically it was I don't I'm, I'm paraphrasing paraphrasing when I say this, it's kind of like saying let's end affirmative action, uh, not to call affirmative action, but very similar for the military. And so um, Representative Crane was arguing, saying that, no, you know, we need to remove this because the military was not about uh, being inclusive. And Representative Beatty was saying, no, you're undermining uh, the opportunity for, you know, uh, black people to be able to serve. So when he used that term in that context, especially for somebody, uh, Representative Joyce Beatty, 73 years old. Um, so she She's remembering certainly a time when that word was used derogatory, and since they were literally trying to figure out how to so, not so why, consider race, so that's where the offense ever, came from. So why would we ever name a black organization something that has always been considered derogatory? Then maybe that's a conversation we need to have. To <laughs> that, but nobody's ever referred to me as colored. I don't think anybody would say, "Hey, look at the colored boy." Well, they say the people. Block. They say people, the color guy. They the say block. people of color. They may not say colored people, but they say people of color. We say people of, people of color all the time. Well, for clarity, and I don't like saying people of color, and just as a side note, but for just to answer that question on NAACP, it was established in 1909. So that was a word that was used at that particular time. So when, in 1909, yeah, we were called color people. So I guess for Representative Beatty, she she feels, and well, many what, other Democrats well, feel, that the don't Republicans make no sense either because they okay. didn't name it the National Association for the Advancement of Niggas. We was called niggas in 1909 too. <laughs> you are if crazy. It, if it's a derogatory term, it's a derogatory <laughs> term. Like why would we well, choose a derogatory term to represent a whole I mean, organization? That's another conversation, but I, I, I don't think I've ever been referred to as a colored person, and I, and, I, and I don't think when that man was, was referring to it, I don't think he was trying to refer to it in a nice way. Well, he said, well, he said colored person, then he said people, he said black people. Yeah, because people started going, oh, oh, you can hear him in the background sounding like they pissed right. off. All I'm saying that's is... Like, that's like a black person going up there and, and saying, instead of saying white, saying something else. I just think we need to stop looking at isolated incidents sometime and take a step back and look at the bigger picture, because if, if, that's, if, that, if the colored people is indeed, you know, a derogatory term, we got to change a lot of things. We shouldn't, let, we shouldn't let but nobody... I, but I think it was, it was deeper than the term, though, Charlemagne. I mean, it was about 
what they're trying to do to the colored people, which is take them out of not having an opportunity to serve in the military. That's not what she um, that's not, not that, having recruitment that's standards. Not, that's not what she said. We're highlighting this because she specifically pushed back on the use of the term colored right. people. She, right, she but didn't. she pushed back. But I'm telling you the reason why she pushed back. No, so you're, 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 the I, I, no, you're, you're, I understand the context of debating over the bill, but in that particular moment, she was pushing back against the term colored person. Sure, she was feeling away because he 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 doesn't want colored people to have that. When you're recruiting for the military, you're saying, "Hey, we want a certain amount of diversity," I'm and they're you. trying to end diversity. He wasn't so saying that she felt in a good away. way. Listen, I'm not saying he was saying it in a good way. I'm just saying we got to take a step back and say, why is this organization called the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People? Because that's that's ridiculous. If we're saying this is a derogatory term, that is ridiculous off the top. But, and, and the term people of color. Right? Well, I don't like the term people of color. Because <laughs> all you do is flipping just, the words. But other he, people, <laughs> people of color. But he came out and said he misspoke. It, 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 he apologized, right? He said he quote unquote misspoke. I didn't see anything about no misspoke. Oh, and this, I think in CBS did News you, it says uh, Representative Eli Crane said he misspoke after he used the racially charged uh, term "colored people" on the House floor. That's right. He used, okay. he used the term "colored people," and we need to call the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People to get on his ass about using the term "colored people." <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, we my. don't see how ridiculous we be sounding sometimes, y'all. I don't know. I don't know what this, is, but I I do want people to know that uh, when you hear this bill, you're going to hear about this bill uh, over the next few weeks, and Republicans are saying that. This bill is about a 5.2 percent pay raise, but it is not just about the pay raise. It is about all of the other amendments that they attach to it. And that's how stuff kind of, you know, not it doesn't pass because they attach one thing to everything else. More than likely, this bill will fail at the Senate. It did pass at the House of Representatives. Uh, and certainly if it goes to President Biden's desk, it will more than likely be vetoed. So. Well, we need to go to the phone lines. Yep. Let's, let's let's open up the conversation to the people because I feel like, you know, in the context that this man used colored people, right? Mm -hmm. In the context he used it uh, in, in, in this discussion, it didn't offend me. And if that's the case, then NAACP, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, should offend us. And the term people of color. What's the difference between colored people and people of color? Uh, I don't, you know what? Let's open up the phone lines. I don't, I don't, it don't feel right to me. 800-585-1051. That's like talking to, to my neighbor and be like, yeah, did you see them colored people up the block? Yeah, but guess what, Envy? The, the N-word don't feel right to you either when somebody else says it to you, but it feels right when you're having a conversation amongst your own. That's facts. But that don't mean it's right. Yeah. I've been said we should get, stop, all of us should collectively stop using the N-word. But when it comes to that term, colored people, the dude said colored people, then he said black people. I don't see how that's offensive if we run around saying people of color all day and we have an organization called the National that, Association for the Advancement of Colored People. That don't, I don't, see, that don't make it right. I, I'm just thinking like, you know, just imagine, just imagine your, your kids playing in, in the playground and be like, hey, who, who's, your, who's my daughter playing with? The little colored boy. That just sounds crazy. Context is everything. Yes, you're right. But in the context that he used it, it didn't offend me. But if, 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 if it does offend, if we're saying now that colored people Right? It's an offensive term. Right. Why do we have an organization called the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People? Why do we say people of color? And our guy, uh, who's a cameraman here, he came in, he said, I never use people of color because it just feel like you're saying colored people right. in a different way. And he's Italian. He's, he just literally came in and said that. He said he's never felt like it was it, right. Co color seems strange to me. But all right, let's, let's talk about it. 800-585-1051. What's your thoughts? Let's, let's discuss. discuss. It's damn. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Pick up the phone, baby. Call 800 585 1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now we're taking your calls. 800 585 1051. If you just join us, during front page news, we were talking about Arizona Republican referring to black Americans as colored people. What's his in, name? Uh, I don't know his name. Let's, let's play the audio. Mr. Chairman, though, that was unbelievably inspiring. My amendment has nothing to do with whether or not colored people or black people or anybody can serve, okay? It has nothing to do with color Mr. Your Speaker. skin, any of that stuff. What we want to preserve and maintain is the fact that our military does not become a social experiment. We want the best of the best. We want to have standards that guide who, who's in what unit, what they do, and I'm going to tell you guys right, right now, the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians, the North Koreans, they are not, they are not doing this because they want the strongest military possible. I'd like to be recognized to have the words colored people stricken uh, from the record. I find it offensive 
and very inappropriate. Is the gentlelady asking for unanimous consent to take down the words? I am asking for unanimous consent to take down the words of referring to me or any of my colleagues as colored people. Well, the, the, the congressman's name is uh, Eli Crane. Eli, Eli Crane, Crane is his yep. name. Look, I'm not saying that colored people is not offensive because everything is about context. So there's absolutely a context where colored people uh, can be offensive. But I don't think that was one of those times. And if colored people is offensive then we need to have a meeting because we use colored people all the time in various ways we say people of color and people of color is just saying colored people with better grammar NAACP is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People hell in the way in intro they say we're happy and we're singing and we're colored so all I'm saying is if colored is offensive colored people is offensive then we need to have a meeting and revise some things don't you think well I mean the Wayans brothers are black so they can say colored just like they can say the n-word if, it, if it, they can say it if they want but when it comes to anybody else I, I, on the outside race using it I don't like it I think it's offensive and if people don't like it it just doesn't feel right it doesn't sit right with me when how you do you feel about people of color when they say people when they refer to us and brown people as people of color because that's just saying color pe colored people with, just, with better grammar I mean I, I don't really hear people say that I say people here say black people I say everybody it, say African people American. of color no, pe what do you mean people of color is used every day they use that term all the time they lump us all in they be like people of color Diversity and inclusion. Yeah, but when they, when they, when they say color. people of color, they usually you they mean what? Black people? They mean brown, brown people, people? They could mean Indian people? It could mean uh, Spanish people? It so, could mean so many different people. But colored people means black people. They, they, when you that's when, not true. Yes, when you refer to let's say somebody Spanish or somebody Indian or somebody they, they don't they're, they're they don't refer them as colored people. Well, people, colored people is referred to as black people. My point is, people of color, colored people, it's the same thing. You're just using better grammar. But but if people are offended by it, people are offended by it. Maybe we shouldn't say it. It seems like any. That's all I'm saying. Let's but, have, it's a discussion. But every other organizational group, if, if they say they offended by it, people stop using it. The LGBTQ community, there's, there were words that we would say back in the '80s. That's right. That that would refer to, like for instance, uh, homosexual, right? Now I don't think I can use that term referring yes, to. You him. can't say homosexual. I don't think so. Man, I don't shut know. up, Envy. <laughs> Why you make me sit sometimes? <laughs> See, yes, you can say homosexual. This is when you can't say homosexual. Oh, all right, take the sexual off. You can't say that part well, that's anymore. That's different. But, but back then you could. Or oh, same thing with a. a I know you couldn't back then, by the way. <laughs> no, you couldn't. There has never been a time well, you could just call somebody <laughs> this, ho the homosexual without the sexual. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't not. remember that time. Uh, maybe a little person. <laughs> little person, you, before you would say midget. Now you can't say midget. I still say midget. Little person sound more offensive. Well, the little people, well, you are little purpose. So you could, you know what? Let's go to the phone. All now. I'm simply saying is, and by the way, when people are offended, they call their organizations, right? To have their back. Yes. So if I'm offended by the word colored people, I got to call the National Association for the Advancement of Colored <laughs> People to have my back. You know what you say how stupid that sounds? Oh, my God. All right. Well, let's go to the phone lines. Vivian, good morning. <laughs> good morning. How are you? I'm sorry for laughing, Vivian. Morning, Charlotte Vivian. Means a jerk, and I hate him. But go ahead, Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm calling because I disagree with Charlemagne. Mm -hmm. um, he's saying, okay, first of all, it was established in 1909. Back then, the term colored was accepted. And not to mention, it wasn't exclusively for blacks. It was really for people of color. I and as that. time goes on, there are... Yes. I just told so why would you say, why would it be called the National Association for the N-Word? That would even be considered. Oh, because and there are a lot of terms... Mm -hmm, Oh, I was going to say because in 1909... There are a lot of... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say there are a lot of terms that over time become ex unacceptable, like the term, the R word, you know, for people with mental illness, illnesses. Hey, hey, over time, point. that became... That's yes. my point. Back then, you, there no. was words that were okay well, that we changed. And you talk about, she's talking about, okay. and, and, and we're not talking about the word retarded. People don't like that word. It, okay. it's, now it's different words. Exactly. Same thing with midget. Okay. Same thing with can, this can we, LGBT Can words. we take a step back for a second? I concede that both of y'all are correct. I don't disagree with any of those points. But what I'm simply saying is, why do we still call it the NAACP then? Why do we still say people of color? That's all I'm saying. So what should we change it to? I don't know. What should we change it I'm to? Just saying, I'm just saying that this feels crazy. Because to this is an established organization. It's been around for over 100 years you know to change it now it just wouldn't sound right if you ask but me it don't make, but that don't make Thank any sense we, if we're saying that colored people is offensive why wouldn't we change and you're telling me that over time colored people has gotten more offensive why wouldn't we tell them to change the name of the organization we should then hello who's this this is kim hey kim good morning what's your thoughts i completely disagree with what Charlemagne is talking about Charlemagne, you have got to take a second and think about the words that you're saying mm -hmm. you're listening to respond but you're not listening to understand yes ma'am if the naacp was started in 1909 it makes perfectly good sense the context 
text of the word matters, like how he was saying it was in a derogatory manner. It's the same way we use the N-word in our culture. It's accepted within our culture, but we know surely when somebody's saying it in a negative way. So you can't just keep saying, oh, this organization uses it, so why is it defensive? It, uh, offensive. It's absolutely offensive the way it was spoken. You think that makes sense? Like you think It makes perfectly good sense. Okay, so let me ask you a question. We're, we're saying that the term colored people is offensive, right? You're saying that. I'm saying yes. in the context that it was used and the way it was used was offensive. I don't think the context that he used it in on that floor is offensive. I think there is a way that that uh, word can be used in the context that offensive, but not the way he used it just now on that floor. 800-585-1051. We're going to take uh, more calls. If you're just joining us, um, Arizona Republican, uh, he was on the House floor and referred to black Americans as colored people. We're asking what your thoughts. We'll play the audio when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. That he call him my phone. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're talking about Arizona Republican on the House floor referred to black Americans as colored people. His name is Eli Crane. Eli Crane, and here's the audio. Mr. Chairman, though, that was unbelievably inspiring. My amendment has nothing to do with whether or not colored people or black people or anybody can serve, Okay. It has nothing to do with color Mr. Your Speaker. Skin, any of that stuff. What we want to preserve and maintain is the fact that our military does not become. You can stop it right there. And listen, colored people absolutely can be offensive, but everything is about context. You know, there, there is absolutely a context where colored people can be offensive. I don't think that was one of those times. And once again, I'm going to keep saying this. If colored people is now offensive, then we need to have a meeting about the term people of color. Because that's just saying colored people with better grammar. And we definitely need to have a conversation about the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Right. It's like the term when, when, when you refer to Jewish people, right? And you take off that's the, all, that's I, ISH, all. right? But for years, people would just say, hey, the so-and-so live in that area. It wasn't supposed to mean derogatory. It was how people would say it. Then we realized that they didn't like it, that it was derogatory. Still a, it's, it's so a, we don't say that word. Now we say Jewish. But no, it's still a context to that, too, though. Because, you know, you, you can say... I, I remember we had uh, the, the head of the ADL up here, Jonathan Greenblatt. And right. We talked about that, mm -hmm. and he said it's all about context. Because there's a, like you can say a, a, that that word shortened in a negative Look context. We won't even say the word because we don't we don't necessarily understand. I, I try not to practice bad habits because we don't know. You know what I mean? I'm, I've been trying to stop saying the N word for years. That's a damn lie. I have. You called me. You, you said N word the other day. Because you be acting like one. See? I try not to say it, but I can't See? think of no other word. See, let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Shanice. Hey, Shan, good morning. What's your thoughts? Um, so I'm not against color. That's because black women have different, beautiful colored children. But I do think we need to look at the word minority a little bit. Just because what's the opposite of minority? Majority, right? Yep. Why are we less than, you know? Okay. I mean, that's just a numbers thing. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I get what yeah. she's saying, but it's just a numbers but thing. But minority means it's, it's, we're low in numbers. But, as opposed to the majority of the people, which is... But if you put all the colors together, <laughs> we're, we're the majority. Yo, shut up, I'm man. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Put all the colors together, we're the majority. Hey, this is King from Oxnard. What's up, King? Talk to us, brother. What's up, Envy? I wanted to uh, talk about that color uh, thing. So, what I noticed though is like I'm, I'm rolling with Charlemagne on this one because what I noticed is every morning you guys play like this thing from the uh, from the Wayans brothers where they say we're happy and we're single and we're. Colors, singing, like singing, singing. Day. We're not single. We're married. <laughs> singing, <laughs> was singing. Okay, we're singing. But that's what I'm. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, like if we if we go and like you know take offense to some of these words, and we got to take it out. Like he was talking about the NAACP. We got to change that too. And then we got to stop playing that stuff. You know, in the morning and and all of that. And we're gonna be taking offense to it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's common sense to me, my brother. But you know, common sense ain't common nowadays. I'm with you. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Hello, who's this? This is Shar. Hey, Shar. Good morning. Talk to us. Good morning. Um, first of all, I think um, and is right. It's a feeling. Number one. Number two is coming from people who we perceive don't like us, and it sounds like a label when they say it. When we speak about it, it's a description, but when they speak about it, it's a label. Um, just like Jewish people, you don't say the. You say Jewish. 
it's it's um, derogatory. Yeah, but those organiz th 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 those people also don't have uh, organizations named after their slurs. So if if, if if colored people is indeed a slur, like we have the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. We're describing ourselves. So why but can't somebody else describe it, us in that way? Like I'm trying to fact, I'm just. No, what they say, they're labeling us. That's a label. So what is people what of they color? Say to us. What is people of color? People of color, we're describing ourselves. But don't you think that's just colored people with better grammar? No, because colored no, people is referred to as black that's people. People of color is black, is brown it's people, is Indian people. So people right. of color is offensive to Indian people. Of people. But colored people right. is as well. Colored but, people. No, is colored people same. is described as black. People. No, it's not. When you colored. say a colored person, nobody ever think it was a Latino. If you say colored person, nobody ever think it was Indian. That's y'all for being stupid. No, colored, colored people, people is people referred is. to as black people. Let me pull up colored people. Well, you, you're right as well. We we do need to have a conversation about changing those um, the, the kind of discussions. The term colored. Kind of the term colored in British usage. <laughs> the term refers to a person mm -hmm. who is wholly or partly of non-white descent. That is not just black people, y'all. Like, like, what are we doing here, man? Oh Seriously, what, what, what are we doing? Why, why are we acting so silly here? Huh? huh? Well, well, what's the moral of the story? I mean, the moral of the story is what I said earlier. I'm, like, I'm not saying that colored people is not offensive. Anything can be con offensive, right? Because everything is about context. So there's absolutely a context where colored people can be offensive. I don't think that guy using it on the floor was one of those times. But on another note, if colored people is offensive, if it is a, a slur, as y'all are trying to tell me this morning, then we need to have a meeting. Because we say people of color, and I feel that's just saying colored people with better grammar. And we have the NAACP, which is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. We need to have a meeting and revise some things, don't you think? Right? Well, we could discuss. Especially if you, especially when y'all keep saying, "Well, it was we we created that word back in 1909, but over time it it it, it seemed to be a bad word." All the more reason we probably should revise some things, right? All right, well. I'm just simply saying, like, what are we we're arguing about something that seems very common sense to me? Okay. All right, well, let's get to the rumor report. Let's talk about big colored <laughs> then. BBC. <laughs> big, well, it's actually big black <laughs> Yes, but so I, it's not colored. But I, but I changed it to colors that you okay. like. Okay, BCC, big colored. BCC. Okay. All right, yeah. we're going to talk about BCCs when we come back. Okay. All right? You just got very excited about that. <laughs> we'll get to it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Back to that work week. Now, did you, um, in Jersey, there was a couple of tornadoes over the weekend. Did you see that? I ain't seen no damn tornadoes. A couple of tornadoes. For real? Yeah. I miss those. Yeah, the weather's been nasty in a couple of places. I've seen that. I saw some flash flooding happening. A lot of flash in, uh, flooding. Pennsylvania, a rest in peace to the family from Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. who, I, some of them lost their life in the flood. I don't remember how many, but. Yeah. Very sad. So I know this whole, this, the weather's been very, very uh, disgusting recently when, when it came to weather. They said it's been, uh, uh, I think, July, the. July 3rd, 4th, and 5th was the hottest days ever. I saw that. Well, y'all thought climate change wasn't real. You know what I'm saying? Y'all listening to all these climate change deniers as if, uh, you know, what's happening on this planet isn't real. But you starting to see the effects of that now. Yeah, they're saying in Vegas it's over 100 degrees the last couple of weeks. And also in Houston it's been, you know, over 100 degrees last week and this week. So well, Climate change is real, people. Jesus Christ. All right. Now, when we come back, uh, we got to talk Adam 22. You know, he's a... Uh, Podcast, and not only that, he's a ex porn star. So he talks about his wife. That was a porn star. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Allowing his wife to have a a, a BBC takeover. We'll, we'll talk about that, and then rewarding her with a Lambo. Yeah, we'll talk about it when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV <laughs> Charlemagne, the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Some thoughts to ponder on this Monday morning. Uh, What's that? All is ripping out the plastic. Yes. Is anyone recycling? Recycling is important. Oh, shut up, Okay? Man. And it's all fun and games until the ripping out the plastic challenge becomes about condoms. Rip me out the plastic, not a baby brand new. Happy Monday. There you go. Well, let's get to rumors. Let's talk Adam 22. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty I patty. I'm gossiping. This is the Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. Now, Adam22, you might know him. He's a podcaster. He's the host of the No Jumper podcaster. Podcast, excuse me. He's also a porn star. So he's been trending the last couple of days because he revealed that he was allowing his wife, Lena the Plug, to film her first ever intimate scene with another man. Now, the man is a uh, big black dude. The big colored? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say big colored. Oh, you want to say colored <laughs> no. now? 
nope, 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 nope. Now, we talk about after they filled, filmed the scene, leaning to plug who this was the first time ever having an intimate scene with another man, and this was a, a big black dude. You know how it is once you get into the moment. It's like, you know, it's all, all no who's bar. Let's go. Do you think that you f***ed her better than Adam did? Well, obviously, yes. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure he probably felt different with Adam for her because love is involved emotions. But as for the physical aspect of getting f obviously. <laughs> right. You need to find that brother's name and say that brother's name. What's his name? Jason Love. What? Jason Love. His name is Jason Love. Okay, Jason, Jason Love. Stop Jason calling Love. that man big and black and all this other crazy stuff. No, I did not say the big black brother, but also... His name is Jason Love. So now uh, Adam22 talks to his that wife. That was him talking just now? That was him talking to him. Give him play by play of what happened after the... The porn session. The po a post game on the pound town is crazy. Yes. Do we need a post game on the pound town? I don't think we need a post game on the pound town. Well, she did one too, and she talks about how her how her vagina felt. I was in a lot of pain for a few days, mm -hmm. so having sex was, you know, it was reupholstered. You're you were a little traumatized by me being like, "Ouch!" <laughs> Hold on. At first, yeah, but that did go away pretty quickly. It took like three or four days. Yeah. Do you feel like it snapped back? Well, you never had the natural birth that you were I, planning on. I don't believe that vag a vagina stretches from having sex once for 40 minutes with a bigger d You know, now that I'm getting more context about this situation, I don't see the issue with any of it. If all of them are porn stars. Well, he rewarded her with a, a, a Lamborghini truck after having her first scene without him. But you don't see what you said. What? I don't see the problem with it. If all of them are porn stars, if all of them are porn stars, this is what porn stars do. Yeah, but when do you retire? I'm sure Adam is making enough money. <laughs> just bought her. Retire? Adam bought her Lamborghini. When do you retire? <laughs> do you retire? And, and before that, she never did a scene with anybody else. So now she has the scene with somebody else. Now I get it. If that was their only way of income, that was the only way of making money. But that's still his wife. At the end of the day, yeah, they've never done a scene like that. Now, well, if your business is porn and um, you know you exhausted, I guess maybe the possibilities between you and your significant other, like everybody's seen that a million times. You got to do something else, right? Oh, yeah, but when do you stop? You, you're doing, you're, you're hosting podcasts. You don't, she, she doesn't have to do it for money anymore. I don't know these people's financial situation. And the only thing that he said that he didn't want it is she didn't want, he didn't want her to have a facial and no kissing. Pound Town, just left Pound Town. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Well, speaking of Pound Town, Sexy Red made an appearance at a high school and people are upset. Now, in the clip, she enters the uh, school gymnasium to the music. She's throwing up the middle finger and gang signs and people are saying that she shouldn't, ha shouldn't have been allowed to in high school. Why? Well, she responded, y'all do know I went there to give the boys money for their haircuts and girls bundles for prom week. Because I remember when I needed help with my prom and stuff. So people are saying that the principal should have made a, a different pick. It should have been another uh, appearance for another school. Maybe she should have did college and not high school. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what they're saying. I, I don't know, man. It's not like the high school students don't listen to, the, to, to these songs and records and watch these videos anyway. But they're saying bringing it to... Well, wasn't she there the, to do a good deed? She was there to, go, to, so to do a good isn't deed. Isn't that what should matter? The fact that she did a good deed? Yes, but people are saying maybe they should have picked another artist. Maybe they didn't pick anybody. Maybe she chose to do that. Maybe that artist... What's her name? Maybe Sexy, Sexy Red, Red said, hey, this is what I want to do for this school. Maybe the school didn't pick her. Maybe she just woke up one morning and said, you know what? I'm making some money now. I want to do something good for some kids. I'm going to choose this school. Yeah. What are we talking about here? Well, people are upset about that and upset with the principal. And what if it was a sex ed class? What yep. if those kids need to know what color a booty hole is? <laughs> Shut up, Have man. you ever thought about that? No. Okay, did you know what color a booty hole was before Sexy Red? No. Exactly. See, he educated a lot of us. It's brown. It's brown. It's brown. I've never looked, you know, but I would assume it's brown. It's brown. Yeah. And lastly, syphilis is making a return. <laughs> syphilis has increased 128% among women in Houston since 2019. And that ain't Sexy Red fault. Now, who you gonna blame for that? They okay. say new affections rose by 57%. That's all that ripping out the plastic. People taking them condoms off. There were 2,900 new infections in 2022. Damn. What's the ride? Why? Come on, give me a reason why. You can't just say that. What's the reason? Ain't no reason why. They said there's a rise. It says uh, syphilis has happens when a pregnant person passes the bacterial infection. So now your baby can get it in the womb. Uh, if untreated, can lead to stillbirth or damage the baby's organs or bones. So they're saying, please get yourself checked out and double check. But syphilis has increased 128% among women. Well, I just looked and said sexual health in general really seems to be underemphasized due to a lack of screening. Uh, other significant issues such as access to care, funding, lack of available clinics. All of these factors contribute to the rising rates of uh, syphilis. Uh, sexually transmitted diseases like syphilis. Mm -hmm. Damn. Whole world. 
Happy Monday. Y'all better stop stop ripping out them plastics and keeping the plastics on if you know what I know. Jesus Christ. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. Now, who are you giving that donkey to? Mm. Before after the hour, we need a man named Gary Hillman uh, to come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with him. I don't know how many other ways to tell y'all to stop drinking and driving, but we'll discuss. All right. We'll get to that next. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. When it's time to get with someone special, the best way to do it is with Magnum Large Size Condoms. That gold foil wrapper is a badge of honor and it means you're protected. And you take care of things with comfort. Accept no substitutes. Bring the pleasure with the gold standard. Magnum Large Size Condoms. WWPR FMHD1 New York. An iHeartRadio station. You don't hear the date. You do dumb ass. You get don't hear the date. You do dumb ass. You are a donkey. <laughs> it's time for Donkey of the Day. Donkey of the Day, huh? I'm going to fatten all that shit around your eyes. They want this man to throw them blows, man. They wait for Charlemagne to tap these gloves. Let's go. They had to make a judgment <laughs> of who was going to be on the Donkey of the Day. They chose you. Yes. It's a breakfast club, mm. bitches. Who's Donkey of the Day today? <sighs> well, Ed Sharon, Donkey of the Day for Monday, July 17th goes to Gary Hillman. I, just, I feel like I just be telling y'all the same things over and over and over and over again. But Gary Hillman is 48 years old and he was arrested for being more than three times over the drunk driving limit. Uh, let me tell you something. I don't know why we are still getting on this radio and telling people not to drink and drive. With all these ride share companies that exist today, there's absolutely no reason. But here's the thing. It's one thing to get behind the wheel. It's another to get behind the wheel and still not know when to quit. See, Gary Hillman was determined to either kill somebody or kill himself when he was driving drunk. What do you mean, Uncle Charlotte? Well, Gary was pissy drunk. And on Friday around 2.50 p.m., clearly day drinking, okay, clearly just left for brunch or something, he collided with a security fence after going too fast around a corner. He failed to stop and report the accident, and he carried on driving. Now, he said he was just drinking vodka. I don't understand people who get this drunk because you would think a crash into a fence would sober you up. Mm -hmm. You would think a crash into a fence would make you realize, man, I've had one too many. But no, Gary kept driving. And then as he was approaching a roundabout, he crashed into a central reservation, which caused his airbags to be deployed. Now, mm -hmm. at this point, I definitely don't think driving would be possible, but Gary kept going. Right? He turned around on the highway and stuck his head out of the driver's window in order to see over the airbags. He was said to be driving slowly, but he veered onto the wrong side of the road on which he was traveling for three quarters of a mile. At one point, Gary drove head on directly towards an ambulance, which had his blue lights and sirens on. Imagine that. This ambulance on the way to help somebody in need, maybe even had somebody in there already, and Gary could have hit them head on and killed everyone in the ambulance, okay? One of the officers said it's nothing short of a miracle that there wasn't an extremely serious incident leading to serious injury or death. Now, when police finally caught up with Gary's stupid ass, his blood test was taken, which revealed he had 249 mg's of alcohol and 100 mg's of blood. I have no idea what that means. I just know the legal limit is 80, and he was three times over the limit. Now. Gary did say he was remorseful and his lawyer said he had hit rock bottom at the time of the offense and he recognizes there was a problem and he has been in contact with Alcoholics Anonymous to help rebuild his life. Good for you, Gary. That's what we want to happen. But that doesn't mean you will not be held responsible for the consequences of your actions. This man has clearly watched one too many Fast and Furious movies. All right. This man thought he was Dominique Toretto. How many times has Vin Diesel's car exploded and he kept driving it? All right. I don't know. How many other ways to tell y'all not to drink and drive? I thought this was something that collectively we all decided was a terrible idea years ago. If you want to drink, stay your ass home, okay? If you want to drink, do it at a friend's house where you don't got to leave. If you want to drink, factor your Uber or Lyft into what you plan to spend that night on drinks because there is no reason to be drinking and driving. No reason at all. There's not one single solitary reason on this third rock from the sun for you to be drinking and driving. Do I have to tell you that each drink you, you know, drive impairs your ability to drink? Wait, what the hell did I just say? Each drink you have impairs your ability to drive. Okay? There, there you go. That's right. If you are drunk, don't drive. All right? Don't even putt. That was a golf reference. Maybe if we make it rhyme, people will listen. <clears throat> Let me try. Allow life to thrive. Don't drink and drive. 
Look, man, the moral of the story is drinking and driving. There are stupider things to do, but it's a very short list. Please give Gary Hillman the biggest hee haw. I don't, I don't even know any other ways to tell people not to drink and drive no more. I mean, we say it all the time. It's unbelievable at this point. It's like, how many, you know how much money was spent on don't drink and drive campaigns? Yeah. Like, come on. There's nothing I can say. Nothing no. that I can say that somebody shouldn't know already no. about drinking and driving. And like you said, if you're going to go out and drink and drive, maybe just put the Uber or whatever. That's right. Taxi cab or yes. however you need to get home. Put that in your budget for Come the night. Come on, man. And just think about it. Each drink you drive impairs your ability to drink. Your lift. Whatever you need to. I mean, each drink. You know what I'm trying to say here? You drunk now? What am I trying to say? I don't know what you're trying to say. Each drink you have impairs your ability to drive. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, that is your donkey of the day. Shout to BET. We'll see you tomorrow. Everybody else, let's open up the phone line. 800-585-1051. We were talking about Sexy Red. Now, there was a clip of Sexy Red. Uh, they say performing in front of a school-age children. It was a high school. I, hit oh, the I didn't internet. see her perform. I thought she just showed up. That's what, the, that's what it, the report said. But she said, I actually didn't perform. It was prom week, and I went up there to give the girls bundles and the boys money for haircuts because I remember when I needed help with my prom stuff. That's right. Drop on the clues, mom, for Sexy Red. All of y'all out there talking about the school shouldn't have picked Sexy Red. I think Sexy Red picked the school. So people were upset. They said, you know, they shouldn't have picked Sexy Red. They said, uh, if you don't know who Sexy Red, can you play a snippet of her, her record so people know what it is? She the one who said your booty hole brown. Well, she says vagina pink and booty hole brown. There it goes, just so you can hear, so you you know what it is. Okay. You got a blank, you got a bleep booty hole? I guess they do. You can't say booty hole? So if they blank it, why you keep saying it? I didn't know you couldn't say booty hole. All right, stop saying it. All right, so people, you know, people are upset. People are saying that, you know, the principal shouldn't have hired her, uh, that, you know, taking teenagers to pound town is not right. Um <laughs> <laughs> The administration man, that allowed man, this to happen man, needs to be ashamed and fired people, because this is just ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I don't think anything was wrong with her going to provide haircuts and bundles for them kids. All right, so we're asking 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts on Y'all this? Y'all worried about the wrong things, man. She did not. If she didn't perform for them kids, no. it shouldn't be an issue. Well, let's talk if she about came it. to that school and you know she's garnered enough money from telling people that they booty holes brown that she can buy bundles and haircuts for them kids, I have no problem with it whatsoever. Well, let's talk about it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about Sexy Red. Now, Sexy Red, of course, she performs the My Vagina Pink, My Booty Hole Brown, that record. All right? So, recently, she went to a school, and uh, she went to basically, people thought she was there to perform. But she cleared that up. She said, I actually didn't perform. It was prom week. I went up there to give the girls bundles and boys money for haircuts because I remember when I needed help with my prom stuff. It was trending. Uh, people were kind of upset. You know, they, they left comments like the principal should be fired. Uh, taking teenagers to pound town. No way. Uh, the administration that allowed this to happen needs to be shamed and fired because this is beyond ridiculous. Uh, and a host of the uh, did your high schools have performers come that kids listen to common sense would be that she didn't perform anything vulgar for the children uh people are saying well why is she going to high school instead of colleges that's what they're saying so the administration that allowed someone to come into the school and provide resources for the students should be fired that makes zero sense to me she didn't perform you know what i mean if she had performed that song that might be inappropriate for kids even though these kids are listening to it on their uh, screaming services every day but if she had came in and performed that'd be different now, i did see a video where she walked in and flipped off everybody yeah she gave everybody a middle finger that was inappropriate and then you know i mean for that crowd and then uh she did the uh i guess the booty hole brown the booty hole sign or was that a gang sign the capital sign i thought it was booty hole sign i have no idea but anyway so people are, are mad at it i look she's an artist and as a kid, when, when, when artists used to go to my high school, yes, of course, they're going to play. They, they say vulgar stuff in their records, but she wasn't performing. She was actually giving back. And even if she did perform, I understand parents might not like it, but these are high school students. They no, listen to it all to, day long. I wouldn't want her to perform. If she, if she, if she performed, that is on the, on the, uh, on the, um, 
the administration because you know usually these songs come with parental advisory stickers correct right so it's up to the parents to determine whether or not you know these kids should be listening to this to this music so if you did bring in an artist like that who has those type of explicit lyrics there should have been some type of form that went out that said hey we're gonna have a performance from sexy red do you want your child to be a part of this performance but she did not perform no she didn't perform so to your point yes rappers make explicit music that's what rappers do male female it doesn't matter they've made explicit music historically throughout the years that should not take away from any good deeds that they do this young lady right. decided to do a good deed at this school yeah, she, she provided haircuts and she provided bundles, bundles yeah. i respect it yeah i don't i don't have a problem with that she didn't perform and let's not get it twisted like you look at all these concerts and festivals rolling loud and all that you got to be 16 and over so these kids are hearing the music but to have them perform you're right if, if they got you know parental approval then that's, that's not a problem but she didn't perform all she, she didn't did was, perform all no, she, she did, did was do a good deed so I, I don't i don't have a problem with this young lady doing a good deed hello who's this Emerson. what's your name Emerson. hey what's up bro what's your thoughts oh uh, thank you man. i mean i don't think she should have went up there all due respect to her but we didn't flaunt even though we listened to that type of music in high school we didn't flaunt it I don't know about that. I mean, all the all the, <laughs> the school parties we danced to it. I mean, there wasn't a yeah, problem. but at the school gymnasium, no, we didn't bring it out like that. Oh no, no, you're right. But she didn't perform, though. She didn't perform. Oh, she didn't. Okay, no. well, she went there to do a good deed. Then all respect to her, but performing that. Would have been a different story. Oh, no, I agree. If she performed like, like we grew up off Uncle Luke, I loved Uncle Luke back in the day. They wasn't bringing no Uncle Luke to perform for no high school though. You know what I'm saying? So that I, I can understand if she would perform, people being upset. But her just doing a good deed? No, I'm not mad at that. Hello, who's this? Hey, what's up, Deshaun from VA? Deshaun from VA, 757 eight zero four. Seven five seven, baby. You know what it is? Hampton Roads area, bro. Talk to us. What, what's your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. I'm not really feeling that, man. I mean, if she went and actually did the performance, I don't think that would have been a good look. If she just went to drop some money off and. And, and show her face That was cool But if they said She performed That's crazy she And I can only imagine I'm She didn't They're talking about my brother She did not perform No she didn't perform Okay okay If she didn't perform That's different But that's the problem I think most people Thinking is what happened Because imagine Uncle Luke Coming in In our era With two live crew To perform At our high school That would be crazy Let me tell you something me and, me, me and Breakfast Club listeners Are usually On the same wavelength I just said the same Yeah you just said thing. it I love our listeners because they got common sense for the most part. But it's also not her fault if she walks in the building and the DJ plays her record. Like, that's that's what happened. They had a DJ? Yeah, they, they played the music when she walked in. They shouldn't have had no DJ. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, she she probably had to get on the mic and explain <laughs> what she was doing. Man, TJ probably was so confused. <laughs> Did she say, what is pink and what is brown? <laughs> <laughs> what? Hello, who's this? Man, this is Flusion. What up, what up? What's up, bro? Talk to us. What's your thoughts on Sexy Red? Man, I, I'm kind of like Uncle Charlotte's say They should have got the full context of everything before they made a judgment on it. Because I think it was a great thing that she did just because she made a song. Hey, man, I would have been great if Uncle Luke would have did it back in the day when I was in school. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's the third Uncle Luke reference this morning. <laughs> Uncle Luke, by the way, Uncle Luke was way more explicit than Sexy Red. Absolutely. I don't care what y'all say. Because, by the way, Uncle Luke was telling us what the color of feces was. All right, Doodle Brown. Doodle stupid. Brown. <laughs> you know stupid. what I'm saying? Stupid. And by the way, what about you know the only you know what's so bad about that song? What? What about everybody whose vaginas aren't pink? You know, because the labia can have a purplish color sometimes. It can have a reddish or brown color. You know. So you're saying she's actually uh, giving us medical research about? I'm saying that she's excluding some people. <laughs> no, but she's saying her vagina is pink and her booty hole is brown. Oh, she said her personally. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't. My I Pink, my booty hole. Oh, you right. You right. She talking about herself. You right. You right. You right. You right. right. It don't matter. She did a good deed. Okay. And by the way, it takes a person from a certain community to know that these girls need bundles. I, I ain't never heard nobody. By the way, I ain't never heard nobody buy a bunch of girls a pack of bundles. Drop one of clues bombs to Sexy Red for really caring about our people. Eight on right, we hear about haircuts all the time. I provide haircuts every summer uh, back home in Mons Corner, South Carolina when I do my book back drive. Now you got me thinking I got to step my game up and provide some bundles, Sexy Red. You know, you know what? Because during the car show, I give free haircuts. Monster, you know, yes. free haircuts. So now... I'm it, doing bundles this year because of you, Sexy Red. Because we already do the... I do my book back drive. Bundles be expensive, though. I'm, and by, by the way, I'm doing it uh, August 12th. Most Corner, South Carolina, Berkeley High School. Uh, I'll be doing it again uh, this year, my book bag giveaway. I'm going to give out bundles. 800-585-1051. We're talking sexy red. Uh, people are mad at her. People are mad at the school because she went to the school. They thought she was performing. She didn't perform, but she went there to give boys haircuts and girls bundles. We'll talk it. about it more when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Daddy, call him my phone. Call him my phone. Tell, tell him I made it. It's topic time. Oh, 
Call 800 585 1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club on this Monday. We're talking about Sexy Red. She was trending over the weekend because there's a clip of her going to a school. They said she was performing, she wasn't performing. But she went to the school, they played her record, and people are mad saying that she shouldn't have been at the school. They said that uh, the principal should be fired. They said that she shouldn't be taking teenagers to pound town. Well, she responded. <laughs> she said, I actually didn't perform. It was prom week, and I went up there to give the girls bundles and boys money for haircuts because I remember when I needed help with my prom stuff. Hey, Sexy Red, I don't know you. You did a good deed. F what these people are talking about. Right, so we're just going to the phone lines. I agree. Hello, who's this? This is Jason. Jason, what's up? Talk to us. Uh, man, I want to comment on this, man. This is an artist trying to promote her craft, man. And so she going to do what she do to promote her craft. But if she never performed at that school and she did something positive, why is, why is they focusing on the, the, the small stuff that you see all these artists do when they do stuff like this? Because you know I we mean, live in an era where I mean, everybody got to focus on the negative. Nobody ever wants to focus on the positive. We always got to find a way to tear somebody down. Because of Sexy Red, mad little boys got haircuts and mad little girls got bundles. Hello, who's this? Hey, this kid Swagger from Jackson, Mississippi. I'm the line on my beat on my birthday. Hey, shout out to the God, DJ Evans. Who our special guest is today? Nobody, Nobody. But happy birthday, brother. Hey, 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 you said brother. Yeah, I don't know why he called you a brother. I can clearly hear the day in your voice. Wait. Shout out to me. Yes, man. Tell him again. Yes, tell him again. Tell him NCC. There go DJ Hill. I'm just waking up, man. Like I told you, it's a counselor year. Counselor day. Cancel. It's my birthday. I got through to the breakfast club. Gang, gang. Happy birthday, sister. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Man, you got it right. Oh, What's man. going on, though, y'all? What's your thoughts? On Sexy Red. Was she right or wrong? Hey, well, let me tell you something like this, y'all. We can't really never say when a celebrity is really wrong when they show up and pull up. Because let me tell you something. When celebrity get an opportunity and then just to come out into, you know, out and people, your fans, get a chance to see you, even if they're not a fan. Just because who you are and you having that platform. Yeah, that I don't means know. a lot. Yeah, I think you just joined yeah. us and you don't know what we're talking about, but we appreciate the... The phone call. Did you really know that was a, a girl? Yes, I knew that was a woman. How'd you know that? I just, I can hear it, man. I couldn't hear it. Because you don't want to hear it. I did want to hear it. Pound town. Just <laughs> left pound town. Hello, who's this? Yo, what's up? It's B-Mom from the Metro. What's good, man? 803, what's happening? Talk to us. What's your thoughts, bro? Now, look, I agree with what Sexy Red is doing. She obviously said, y'all do know I went there to get a boy's haircuts and give the girls bundles for their proms because I remember when I ain't had nothing. Correct. So I love the way... That she handled herself with class. She didn't go on an Instagram live and go crazy or nothing like that. So, nah, Sexy Red is absolutely right. And another point that I will actually say about Sexy Red, too, is that she shouts out the men on Pound Town like, my n***a me out or whatever. Like, she she actually respects masculine energy and stuff <laughs> like that. And the way, she, the way she approaches herself. And that's why I think people love her so much. Okay. I'm not mad at it, man. She did Thank a good you. deed. She didn't. If she would have performed at the school, I can understand people, you know, maybe having some complaints. But all she did was a good deed. All right. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, man, 100% Remy human hair bundles cost between $40 and $150. Salute Sexy Red. I don't even know how many she bought, but I know that was a nice little pretty penny if she had to buy it for a whole school. Mm -hmm. So salute to that woman, man, for making a, you know... Easing, easing the burden of somebody having to pay for some bundles, man. Salute to her. All right. Now, when we come back, we got your rumor report. We got to discuss DDG. He's speaking his feelings and people are making fun of him. We'll talk about it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. You know, it's a lot of cancers up here. You know, I'm a cancer. 629 is my day 629 is red day uh, But I got Eli Eli works here Behind the scenes At the Breakfast Club He's a cancer Happy born day My guy Eli Go to the mic right Eli. there Eli Eli Tell him what your Instagram is Eli uh, Is Mike on? What's your Instagram Eli? My IG's uh, My IG's OVO Eli yeah, OVO, OVO Eli. Eli Cause you love Drizzy he's, Drake Yeah he yes, loves Drizzy uh, Drake Love Aubrey but he's, up, OVO? but he's But uh, he's Today's his birthday He runs the camera He does production up here as well He does a lot up here So we just want to say Salute you and happy birthday brother Thank didn't you they so just, much Didn't they say that uh, Isn't Drake Wasn't he supposed to perform Yeah today he's actually Touching down in New York It's all a blur tour this No week. they just They just they just said that Because of striking That it, it, the show is actually Canceled for tonight So So for Whatever 
striking. Oh, they're striking. The, the Barclays. The, the, the Barclays. And the Sag strike. Barclays is striking. You want to see? Yeah. And Drake's an actor, so he really can't. Shouldn't be doing anything. It's a matter. What's wrong? Look. Bro, I know you ain't about to cry. Drake fans may go thirsty <laughs> if Barclays sent a concession workers a voting to strike. See that? Two hours ago. No way. Yeah. Damn. Damn. You got another plan for your birthday? Uh, that, was, that was it? That was it. You had tickets? No. Nah. Oh, he didn't even have no tickets. Why you upset? You didn't even have tickets. They're working on it. We'll see. They're working on it. Who's working on it? Oh, promo. Oh, promo. Oh, people appear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, oh. damn well, Drake ain't giving up. This promo <laughs> Drake ain't giving up tickets. tickets. Please, stop. All right, well, happy birthday, bro. We just want to say happy birthday, and we appreciate you, bro. Thank now get back on that, that camera. What's up? All Thank right. Yo, shout out Drake, OVO. You don't even know him. Next week. You ever met him? Oh, no, not what yet. What you mean, see you next week? <laughs> we we'll see you next week. week. Oh, you want to no, go somewhere else to see the show? Next week, and this week he's at Barclay, so he's going to be in New York two weeks. So you're going to stalk him? No, not really. I mean. All right, well, well, well listen to the truth, man. On behalf of the oh, Breakfast yeah, Club and the Drake Breakfast will be Club performing staff, tonight. Drake is performing tonight. <laughs> we just joking. We just messing with you, and we got you a pair of tickets to go see Drake tonight. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes way. Yes way. Yes way. We know you're a huge Drake fan. I mean, like you said, your Instagram is OVO. We got you two tickets on behalf of the Breakfast Club. What are the tickets at? And we everybody in the staff up here, we appreciate you. We Let love you. Let me see you. the tickets. We make sure they're good seats we, first. Now, we emailed them to them. Oh, you emailed them to them? We emailed them to them. email. Make sure you got them. Yeah, so we got them. So, happy birthday. Eddie's sending it right now. Bro, so stop smiling. Yeah, He's on. happy. I got, I got my lines in right now. He's about to cry. <laughs> 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 he said he got his line right now. That's why you can't stop smiling. Yo, but we appreciate you and, and enjoy nah, your birthday with Drake guy. tonight, man. They're going to have a lot of fun. We were just joking. Drake's concert is going down tonight at the Barclays, so get there early. And uh, congratulations, OVO, Eli. Yeah, one love. Love y'all. You did not accept me. Why you act like you were just accepted an award? One love. <laughs> love y'all, yo. OVO. OVO. Yo, first, I want to thank, thank Drake. <laughs> that I want to thank my man Chubbs. That I want to thank... Yes, sir. Shout out to OVO, too. Man, get out of here, man. <laughs> You got an owl on your ass cheeks or something. <laughs> well, happy birthday, man. We appreciate what you do, brother. All right. Well, let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Birkins. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Right. Yes. On The Breakfast Club. Uh, now we got to send a rest in peace to Jane Birkin. All right, she's an actress and singer who inspired the Hermes Birkin bag that you see all these women and now guys rocking. Now these bags are about eight thousand dollars to they go they can go up to a hundred thousand dollars a bag. You just can't walk in and buy a Hermes Birkin. You actually have to start a relationship. Now rumor has it that she was on a flight with uh, I guess the owner of Hermes uh, way in, in the eighties. And I guess she was having too much stuff in her bag that she carried. And she was just like, this is a hassle. All these bags are too small. I can't put things in my bag. And the owner of Hermes at the time was on a flight where it was like, I'm going to make something for you. And they created the Birkin bag in her name. But well, how she, did the young lady pass? She passed away. Uh, she was 76 years old. Oh, okay. She was 76 That's years young. old. Yeah. They said that uh, two years ago, she uh, suffered a couple of strokes. So hmm. uh, I guess they're saying she had a handful of health concerns. So... She passed away, so definitely rest in peace. And that's the reason why you women out there have Birkins. Oh, God bless her. She was an actress and singer, though, so it wasn't like just some random woman. On no, the no, plane. it just wasn't random yeah, woman yeah, on the yeah, plane. Yeah, no, yeah. she it was an actress. Some and random woman yeah. on the plane. They decided to take her last name. Yep, she was a British actor and singer. Yeah, I wonder if how much she got off of that Birkin. You know what I mean? Like, if does she get a percentage because they named it after her? Wonder. I'm, I'm sure. All right, now Haley Bailey's ex boyfriend DDG. People are saying that he's soft and that he's too sensitive oh, because he talks about him being insecure about dating Haley Bailey. Right, so people have been calling him a simp and soft and a sucker and all these other things, but he's just speaking what he's been going through. I said this last week when we were discussing uh, Kiki Palmer, baby daddy. Why can't men express their feelings? Why can't that man express his insecurities? We have all these conversations about you know how men don't express their feelings and you know we want men to go do the work on themselves by going to therapy so they can properly learn how to communicate their feelings. But then when a person does it, uh, they, they get slandered for it. It's going to come a point, man, you're going to keep pushing men away you know, keep pushing men to uh to not express themselves. It's already been that way for years, but now you've gotten us to be able to express ourselves just a little bit, and now you're telling these men to shut up every time they do. Yeah, which I think is whack, and I think having two young boys, uh, uh, well, Logan's 19 years old, but another young boy, you tell them to express their feelings, right? Because you don't want them to bottle that in. You don't want them to keep that to themselves and then one day explode and not know what to happen. And so end you up want beating them up to daddy, because you know that's what Logan headed. Logan's what? already bigger than his pops, you know what I'm saying? 
like he's already the really the man of the house. So it's only a matter of time. You know, if you don't express, if you don't let Logan express his feelings, he's gonna body slam you. That's what you was getting at, right? No. Oh, okay. I was just shut up, man. And that is your rumor report. See, I try to be yours. See, I try to be sensitive and all up and forward with you, but you yeah, Logan's gonna beat you up. Logan's gonna body slam you. Logan's gonna throw you out the house. Logan's oh shut yeah, up. I didn't say throw him out the house, but yeah, I can see him doing that too. Oh my god. I can see him tossing you. Oh my god. And I also want to say, since we're talking about it, man, um, uh, July 27th, actually the weekend of July 26th to the 28th uh, in my birthplace of Charleston, South Carolina, they have the Low Country Mental Health Conference. Mm-hmm. And uh, I will be welcoming everybody to the Low Country Mental Health Conference um, on July 26th, July 26th to the 28th. And you can go register right now at Low Country MHConference.com. That's Low Country MHConference.com. I didn't even know that. Uh, South Carolina and, and Charleston was doing the Low Country Mental Health mm-hmm. Conference. I was having a conversation with uh, Mayor Tecklenburg a couple of weeks ago when I was home, and he just randomly mentioned it. And I'm like, how long y'all been doing this? And mm-hmm. It's been going on for a long time. And you sure that's the date, right? Yes, it's a weekend. It's July 26th. Uh, July 26th is Wednesday. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Okay, so July, it's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. July okay. 26th to the 28th. I'll be there at uh, July 27th at 8.30. AM. That's when I'll be there. Okay. Yes, but it starts uh, July 26th. But you can go register at lowcountrymhconference.com. It's the Low Country uh, Mental Health Conference in Charleston, South Carolina. All right. And then that weekend, of course, is my car show in Atlanta. That's the 29th. That's Saturday. And you know, we're bringing cars from, we're going to have Young Dolph's whole fleet, uh, Boosie Badass 50, uh, Uptown Car Club, Sisters with Jeep. So many different car clubs are going to be joining us. Kids five and under are free. So if you haven't got your tickets, that's July 29th in Atlanta. All right. Get your tickets. And if you want to put your car in the show, you can just email me, djmvcarshow at gmail.com. All right. Let's get to the mix. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. When it's time to get with someone special, the best way to do it is with Magnum Large Size Condoms. That gold foil wrapper is a badge of honor and it means you're protected. And you take care of things with comfort. Except no substitutes. Bring the pleasure with the gold standard. Magnum. Large size condoms. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. I just want to salute to all the HBCUs out there. I know a lot of kids are planning to go back to school in the next couple of weeks, colleges. I know um, but September 16th, we're doing an HBCU Classic in New York. It's Morehouse versus Albany State. Uh, it's going to be a week of events. So it's going to be step shows, bands, uh, day parties, night parties. They're tailgating out there. So we're just inviting all the colleges, all the fraternities, sororities. If you went to an HBCU or thinking about going to an HBCU, we want you to come down and really definitely check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to make uh, some of the alumni feel like they're back on the yard. It's just going to be a great day for HBCU in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Carolina area, D.C., Virginia. We want everybody to come on up, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're just trying to create these experiences more and more and more for HBCU alumni, HBCU students, and people thinking about going to HBCU. So uh, just Google it and, it, and it comes right up. It's at MetLife Stadium again. It's Morehouse versus Albany State. All right, and that's September 16th. Now, when we come back, we got the positive notice, The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. Now it's time to get up out of here. Charlemagne, you got a positive note? I do have a positive note, man, and it comes from my good brother, uh, Elliot Connie. Elliot Connie is a great psychotherapist. Uh, he's actually who I talk to when I need to talk to somebody. But my man Elliot says, don't worry about proving doubters wrong. F them. Spend your energy proving your support is right. Breakfast club, bitches! You all finished or y'all done?